Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bill and this is Trying to Stand where I try new things in pop culture and today I am trying to stand Over the Garden Wall. More specifically, the music from the soundtrack of Over the Garden Wall. A list of 10 songs. You guys were suggesting it after my Steven Universe series. Seeing as how it is that spooky time of year, everyone has been telling me that Over the Garden Wall fits that. I have no idea. I've never watched it. I know nothing about it. I recognize the visual from like art things and at Comic Cons and whatnot. I don't like how I said Comic Cons, Comic Cons. So yeah, I wanted to check out the music, see what it's all about. So we're gonna be starting with Over the Garden Wall from Songs of the Series, Over the Garden Wall, Cartoon Network. That is the full video title. I'm assuming this is the theme song, if it's just the titular name. Ooh! As a melody soars. Ooh. Hey, that's the name of the show. Ooh. Okay, tuba fart. That was not what I was expecting at all. Very brassy, like a New Orleans square kind of a sound to it. At first it had a very like fairy tale kind of folksy kind of sound to it, but it felt very, I'd say almost cautionary. Cause it doesn't tell you what's on the other side of the garden wall. Let me pull up the lyrics. Over the garden. Wall. Yeah, it has a very haunting kind of undertone to it. A single soul sets his voice singing. Uh, two voices, now they are singing, so maybe there's a relationship here? Possibly something romantic? Yeah, it, it sounds like the beginning of like a journey, like setting out to find someone or to save someone. It was very like brass heavy and it made me think very like earthy, like maybe like a forest or a swamp. Like, it is interesting, like, it's black in ravines, it's at night, uh, clear over the reeds, uh, bulrushes swaying, oak, pair of heart, pluck a pair of heartstrings, yeah, uh, there's a relationship here, but it's over the garden wall to these, so do they live in different places, or is this some sort of quest? But it's nice, it's very pleasing, I really enjoyed it. It had more of a grounded feel to it than I was expecting. It says the name of the show in the song, so I, it might be an intro, I, but I really liked how that sounded. Like it gave me like a bit of like a Wind in the Willows kind of a vibe. Like very like, sit down and let me tell you a tale. I liked that. All right, and next we have Patient is the Night, which that sounds like a Bruce Springsteen song title. <laughs> Among the fields of Ooh. Vision is the night. This is relaxing. Ooh. The whistling's a nice touch. Kind of gives me that like old timey kind of sound. Ooh, but now it's echoing. Like someone who's whistling to like cover up anxiety. Still anxiously I read. Boom! Anxiously, I wait. That was really mellow, but it had a very interestingly kind of dark, savory feeling to it. Like, if you think about the lyrics, you know, it's it's late at night. Time's a gentle stream, the longer it seems. Patient is the night. How I long to see your face. So anxiously, I wait. Like, they're worried that someone got lost on their way to them or something could have happened. Like, and again, that the whistling, like I said, it, it felt like someone, you know, you're, you're uh, especially in cartoons, you're lost in the woods, you get a little nervous and you, to try to distract yourself, you know, try to seem a little more casual, a little more calm. It felt very ominous. There was something about it where it's like, she's never late, but still anxiously I wait, patient is the night. Because we're taking time to illustrate like how dark it is, how late it's getting, makes me wonder if this is like the, the starting off point, like something's wrong, someone's gone missing, or someone stumbled upon something, or someone got distracted, or someone got lost, like out in the woods, like this like cold wilderness. His voice was really good. Like sort of like that balladeer opening to a classic tale. Halfway through, once the whistling started to kick in, like first I was starting to relax and then I started to get a little more anxious with the whistling. I thought that was really interesting. Feels like someone who's trying to stay calm, trying to rationalize, think logically and you know, oh, I'll just keep waiting. But like their imagination's kind of getting the best of them. Like the ending doesn't give me the sense of like, oh, and then the person showed up. Like it felt like they're still waiting. Like it kind of faded out. It didn't resolve musically, it faded out. Like the waiting is still happening. And next we have Langtree's Lament. Langtree, am I saying that right? Longtree, Langtree, ah, someone's named after a tree. Did it to Paul me. 
Oh no. Ooh, F. Ha! <laughs> Kiss and then run away. Oh. Tease me. Ooh. Oh. Someone either left her or vanished. Based off of the other songs, it feels like someone disappeared. It wasn't like, oh, I saw you with someone else. She said you've been gone for three days. Yeah, without leaving a letter, it's like she's surprised, she's shocked, she's, she's upset, but it also sounds like it might even be possibly out of character for this person. Maybe he vanished, like maybe he's missing. Maybe someone ventured off where they're not supposed to, and it's like over the garden wall, so it's like past property, right? Like your garden wall would be what divides you, your land from something else. So maybe it's more your community from something else? That's interesting. I also really liked her voice. Like it was very soft and it like, it felt sad, but it didn't feel over the top. Like we weren't playing into this feeling. It wasn't, oh, oh, you left. Like it didn't feel overdone or cartoonish. It just felt melancholy, like still kind of dazed bafflement to it. The sentiment from the first two songs mixed with the title, Over the Garden Wall. I think someone went missing. That or this guy's just a jackass. One of the two. Oh, this is the theme song, Into the Unknown, parentheses, theme song. You'd think it would be Over the Garden Wall, but maybe that's the Balladeers song, maybe that's the intro. I thought, why would they do that? I don't know. There's no song about like once upon a time and everything's great. Everything just feels like everyone's already missing something. Like the danger's already started. Very foreboding. Let's see what happened to you in Into the Unknown, parentheses, theme song. Ooh, it's like a music box. Led through the mist. <laughs> and where shall we end? Okay. Stories are revealed to those who travel through the wood. Hey, travel through the wood. That was really pretty, but I, okay. Is this an anthology or is this a linear story, I wonder? Because it was the, oh, going through into the unknown, the s stories are revealed to those who go through the woods. This is the introduction I was talking about where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for that opening of the storybook, but this one was a little darker than I was expecting. It's fall, but we hear the echoes of spring. Where shall we end? If dreams can't come true, then why not pretend? Like it, it feels very cold. It's interesting. I really like that. Like that's so engaging. Like that's so mysterious. I love whoever's singing that. His voice matches this feeling of like, it's fall, the cold winds, the woods. Like he has a very earthy quality to his voice. It's not quite relaxing, but it's almost hypnotizing and it's, it's engaging and mysterious. I really like that. Usually I'm expecting with a cartoon animated series, I'm expecting the theme song to be more bright colors and like upbeat chords and like excitement and a brief breakdown of all the characters, maybe a little bit of the world. But this was like a very foreboding adventure at your own risk, enter if you dare, a very ominous, bleak, kind of an intro, and it wasn't what I was expecting at all. That's on me. I apologize, Cartoon Network and animated works in general. It's kind of cool, like it feels like, like, especially that toy box opening at the beginning, it feels like fantasy, but it also gives me this like almost Danny Elfman kind of sound to it. Again, with the heavy brass, the plucky toy box sound, the poetry and the lyrics, like describing the ominous weather of this world, but there's still like a promise locked inside if you dare go look for it. Like, yeah, it gives me like a Danny Elfman kind of a vibe. All right, and next we have <laughs> potatoes and molasses. We're not here to judge, we're here to try new things. How dare I laugh at that? Potatoes and molasses. Apples and bananas. <laughs> okay. Huh. You struggled there with the piano a little bit. I like the clash and then the pickup. Potatoes and molasses. Oh, it's a kid. Cream and candy rocks. What? They're so much sweeter than algebra class. Huh. <laughs> That poor kid got shut down at the end. I thought that was kind of cute because it's they're sweeter than algebra classes, but it's, it's adorable, but like, it's also a little troubling because it's, if you think about it, potatoes and molasses, it's like French fries and candy. It's carbs and sugar, it's junk food. 
But it's weird, the song's about like overeating. Like you know you've had enough when you start seeing stars. It's very sweet, very cute. I don't know, but there's still something very overindulgent about it. Yeah, like sweeter than algebra class. Like maybe this kid isn't very bright. Maybe this kid just really loves food. I loved how the music started with like a clunky piano and then it got into that like 20s Western bar stool sound. What's that called? Like that almost like ragtime kind of sound. My answer was gonna be ragtime. Oh, well, there you go. The people call it ragtime. But I loved how it was like, blink, blink, blink. Like almost like the kid was playing it. Like he kind of fumbled with it at first or another kid was playing it for him. It, it, it reminds me of like a little bit of like, gluttony. Gluttonous in a certain sense, a little overindulgent, but also I think it matches the theme of fall. Because think about it, it's like carbs and sweets. Halloween candy, you know, you put spiced pumpkins and everything. Like I think it very much fits this time of year. It's just potatoes and molasses. It's just making me think of like the grossest thing. Like it, like sticking to your teeth and also filling your stomach. Like, like that house made of candy, like Hansel and Gretel kind of a feeling like there's something wrong here. I don't know why I keep getting this like fairy tale kind of feeling to it. So now I'm picturing this kid either tricking people over potatoes and molasses or getting tricked by his love of sweets and junk food. It felt very out of place with how dark everything's been feeling so far. I'm like, ah, either don't trust the potatoes and molasses or that kid shouldn't trust somebody. Ooh, the Pied Piper, that's what I was thinking of. The Pied Piper. Hmm. Like that kind of a feeling to it. I don't, I'm not familiar. The Pied Piper, it's the story of the man who, uh, the town infested with like rats. Like he does to the rats. Pay the Piper. The rats died? <laughs> I like this. This is getting me thinking. I like doing TV shows without knowing the context and just listening to the music. It's fun. I wonder how wrong I am. A bunch of people are just sitting there like, what an idiot. It's just about potatoes and, being, and molasses getting poured over them. What a fool this the third bill is. But I'll still subscribe because I support people. And next we have Like Ships. It's 30 seconds long. Like ships upon a winding river. Oh. Oh, that was fast. Okay, um, well, it was definitely romantic in nature. They're, they're, they're strangers, but now they're not. Ships upon a winding river, like they're going through a journey, maybe they were lost and now they are found. Maybe this is the, uh, the dangers of going over the garden wall. Maybe this is a Romeo and Juliet kind of a feeling, like two people in opposite sides of that wall. Star-crossed sort of happenstance of, of finding each other. I think it's really interesting. There you go. 30 seconds and a five hour response. That's that's my channel. Next up. Uh, next we have a courting song. Uh, so I guess someone's getting sued. You don't have to applaud that. That was awful. Even though I live for the applause. Ooh, it's got that ragtime sound again. What a merry time we'll have upon your wedding day. Wow, who's getting out of control? <laughs> what a merry time we'll have upon your wedding day. Hi, this is stressing me out. It's stressing me out. <laughs> wow, that was oh god. Two people just met one song ago, and now this this song's here with this dude filling out all the steps of how to impress a girl, writing a letter and getting a good calligrapher so it looks fancy, and it ends with this like this sped up, oh man, we gotta get your rings, we gotta make a dress, you gotta get all nice and fast for your wedding day. Like it got so overwhelming and like moving super fast. It almost pointed out how much like weddings stimulate the economy. You need a cake, let's go to the baker. Oh, you need a uh, ring, let's go to the jeweler. Blister of all this stuff and then again and so you see our handiwork is yours if you're inclined but our livelihoods at stake so don't you go and change your mind but i like how it just started to like speed up really fast maybe it is moving that fast or maybe it's the idea that other people are going to start pressuring him because again it starts with writing a love letter let's just get you married let's just get everything done right now so maybe they're poor maybe this town's not very well off or this person at least or you could just be genuinely excited and I'm just a cynic. It's called a courting song and it starts with the love letter. So I think this person's just blowing it way out of proportion. Cause I think this person, whoever this is, might be a stranger or just isn't as invested. The vows, the whole romantic mess. Like it felt a little dismissive right there. Not even naming him by name and like 
dismissing his clothes. That was interesting. I really liked that. Man, kids shows have such a better quality than when I was than when I was younger. Next, we have the Highwayman song. Uh, I believe this is who you speak to to pay your toll on your way to the danger zone. Uh, that joke is relevant because they're doing a Top Gun sequel reboot for no reason. I'm the Highwayman. I make ends meet. Would you smoke a carton of cigars? I'll knock you out. What? Who was that? Well, that got, uh, dark. This got aggressive. I will drag you off the road, steal your shoes. I'm the highway man, and I make ends meet. But it also kind of gave me that feeling of, like, nothing personal, it's just business. And there was something, too, like, he just sounded, like, dazed, or, like, he's slurring his speech. Like, he's just someone you just don't want to mess with. I'd say an antagonist, but none of that sounded personal. It just sounded like someone you just don't want to piss off. Oh man, these are words I don't know how to say, which is fine. Uh, this is all about new things. Uh, forward on Onroy? On Roy? Forward on Roy? The song will probably tell me. This is that song. Um, let's do this thing. This sounds sad. Yeah, descend. Yeah, this sounds sad. Woo! Wow. Wow. Good for her. Them some pipes. Holy crap. That was really sad. So someone's dead. I don't know. That was, that sounded like a funeral progression. Especially the, uh, the veil of sleep descend. This feels very upsetting and foreboding. Like something bad happened. Maybe it's not death? Like I'm, I'm looking at the lyrics and very opposites. Forward cherubs hear the song, like cherubs like love. A child's wish calls us on. Very positive, then descend, descend, here he escapes, or here he escapes. Like it feels very deceptive, like it goes back and forth between positive and negative lyrics. Something bad happened. Maybe we're going between two different perspectives, like maybe something good for someone, but bad for someone else. Maybe someone's in danger and someone doesn't know it. Does that make sense? Like it felt like either someone was crashing a funeral or crashing a wedding. At first I thought it was a wedding because it felt very lovely, but then some of the lyrics were like, oh, descend. And I'm like, well, this ain't good. Maybe something bad happens at a wedding. That's that's typical of a fairy tale. Having Shrek, the greatest fairy tale of all time. I don't know, there's something about that that just doesn't feel right. And then also have like that grandiose, beautiful soprano in the middle of all this. Like that's not how these other songs have sounded at all. Like it feels like another another show or another world or another complete style altogether. Maybe this is on the other side of the garden wall. Who's to say? Maybe that's the 11 o'clock number. Ooh. Forward cherubs hear the song, a child's wish calls us on, descend, descend, here he escapes. The dreams are winged wind hath made. Maybe it's a bad dream. You're not wearing pants. I don't know. Yeah, if we're only beneath the veil of sleep, can we word I don't know, act on men. Let's, let's learn a word today, children. The on, only Roy were the dark-winged spirits, demons of dreams, which emerged each night like a flock of bats from their cavernous home in the land of eternal darkness beyond the rising sun. That ain't good. But then why are you using it as an active verb? Can Oh, can we demons act on men through the veil of sleep? Someone's attacking him through his sleep or attacking someone through their dreams. Something bad is happening. Hmm. I don't want to look too much into the song because I don't want anything spoiled for me. I really liked it. Again, it's very engaging and I loved how different this song is. It gives you a feeling of being in another world or another layer of music to explore. Man, I love, like, just, it's giving me a lot to just sink my teeth into. This is fun. I am, like, this is a lot of fun. And to close out the night, we have Come Wayward Souls, which I almost said carry on my wayward son. <laughs> Come Wayward Souls, or carry on my wayward souls, the Kansas version. It's like the dead opposite of the last song. 
low intense bass and it felt negative, but the lyrics sounded positive until the end when you submit to the soil of the earth. That was, huh. That one felt like someone died. There is a light for the lost and the meek. So like a solution, but then sorrow and fear are easily forgotten when you submit to the soil of the earth. Like you forget all your troubles when you die? Someone calling it Bruce Willis twist in the show. Someone's been dead the whole time. I'm calling it right now. It's like the end of Sixth Sense. Yeah, that felt like a hearse lowering. That was, that one was dark and upsetting. First it felt like, oh, we're closing the book. Like, oh, there's a light for the lost and the meek. But then it's like, all your problems are easily forgotten when you submit to the soil of the earth. Did someone die? I'm resisting the urge to say they're in hell in every video I do. but maybe there is a theme here about afterlife. It's a very sour, it's a very dour note for uh, for an ending. Like again, it felt like the conclusion. It felt like something that comes towards the end on top of being obviously the last track on the playlist. It's like trying to be at peace with what happened and to like move on. I'm interested to see what happens where we take such a musical turn because everything felt very like brassy and at times very fun, but it was always very like woodsy fantasy, but like foreboding and ominous. And then it feels like once we go to the other side of that, like whatever it is that's so mysterious, just like dour, classical, vibrato, heavy, operatic qualities. That was interesting. That was really cool. Like I really liked listening to this music and it felt very engaging and it felt like a world was definitely being built here for me through this music. There's something there too where it like almost, it almost fits this like epic poem sort of balladeer kind of quality to it. Feels like there's something to be learned here. Feels precautionary. It feels ominous and mysterious and strange. I'm, I'm worried that it's going to give something away. Then don't do it. Okay. You already had people freaked out when you listened to the wedding song from Steven Universe. <laughs> That's very true, but I also didn't know that it was a spoiler. I'm very immune to being observant of wider things. Okay, then never mind. I won't do the Beast song. But yeah, I definitely want to check out the show. I feel like it would definitely fit in this fall Halloween-y spooky motif that I like going in my life. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the songs. Uh, should I watch the show? Do you want my thoughts on the show? Let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video if you did. Subscribe if you want more. Let me know if there are other shows with music that I should listen to before checking out the show. I really love doing this with Steven Universe. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, if you're into the horror gaming videos I've been doing, there's another one dropping on Friday. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great night and a splendid, spooky season. Nailed it. That's called alliteration. That's when you end. And nothing else after that, because that would be uncomfortable. Shut up. <laughs>